Hello friends, this video on NEET Ecology is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 5. The figure given below is a diagrammatic representation of response of organisms to abiotic factors. What do 1, 2 and 3 represent respectively? Okay, so these are the internal levels and these are the external levels. Now we have already learned about regulators and conformers, like how do they change their internal body environment with respect to the external uh, environment, right? Now in case of a regulator, what happens in regulators? So in regulators, the internal temperature is independent of the external temperature. That is, there is a constant homeostasis happening in case of regulators. So looking at the graph, you see that this straight line, the first, which is marked as one, this represents the scenario for regulator because you see the internal temperature is always at the same level and it doesn't depend on the external temperature. Even though the external level is increasing, but the internal level remains the same. So that obviously proves that one represents the regulator. What are conformers? So conformers are like little opposite to that of the regulators. In case of conformers, there is very little homeostasis which happens. Like in their case, their internal temperature changes as per the external temperature, right? So in that case, we can say that the second curve, that is this second line, represents the conformers. Whereas the external temperature increases, the internal temperature also increases. So this represents conformers. And what about the third one? So if you look at the third one, the initial phase, it behaves like a conformer, but later it behaves like a regulator, right? So we can call this as the partial regulator. So it is not a complete regulator because in the initial stages, it behaves like a conformer. So which would be the correct option? So the right option would be one is regulator, two is conformer and three is partial regulator. So D is the right option. Question number six. Reduction in vascular tissue, mechanical tissue and cuticle is characteristic of xerophytes, mesophytes, epiphytes or hydrophytes. The vascular tissue reduction, vascular tissues are generally used for conduction of water and minerals. So for plants which live in water, they do not need vascular tissues, right? In fact, they also do not need mechanical tissues too much for support and all. So therefore, the right option would be hydrophytes. So as we have discussed before also some of the important characteristics of hydrophytes are presence of mucilage, the uh, sticky or the viscous substance on their body for protection and lubrication, mechanical tissues are absent, poorly developed vascular tissues, poorly developed roots, Arenchyma is present to help in gaseous exchange. So these are some of the important characteristics of hydrophytes. Question number seven. Consider the following four statements about certain desert animals such as kangaroo rat. They have dark color and high rate of reproduction and excrete solid urine. They do not drink water, breathe at a slow rate to conserve water and have their body covered with thick hairs. They feed on dry seeds and do not require drinking water. They excrete very concentrated urine and do not use water to regulate body. Which two of the above statements for such animals are true? So now quickly uh, think of the adaptations for desert animals. And what do you think? Which are the right options? Now the desert animals, they seldom drink water. Like 90% of their water requirement is met from the water which they produce by their respiratory breakdown. Like the water which is produced as part of the respiration, that water only meets 90% of the water requirement of their body. So they need very less water. And only 10% of water is obtained from food. Like they need to drink water only for some 10% of their water requirements. Right. Right. So what we now let us quickly look at the options that are given here. So we can definitely say that option two is correct because they do not drink water very often and they also breathe at a slow rate to conserve water as much water as they can. They have their body covered with thick hairs to prevent any kind of water loss also. So this is one of the right options. The other option is they feed on dry seeds and do not require drinking water. Because as I said that 90% of water requirement is met by the water which is produced as part of respiration. 10% of the water is obtained from food. 
right so they do not really need to drink water much separately so with these points in mind we can say that option c is the right one question number 8 a high density of elephant population in an area can result in mutualism intraspecific competition interspecific competition or predation on one another now what do you think would happen if a lot of elephants are allowed to live in a, a one particular area now all the elephants they belong to the same species right so obviously when too many now all the elephants would have the same requirements for their survival so all of them need the same resources now since you have released all of them in the same area so they, there will be a competition between all of them so obviously there would be a competition now all the elephants they belong to the same species so this is basically a competition between organisms of the same species which is intra specific competition so the correct option would be b because intra specific uh, competition exists between organisms belonging to same species question number 9 The population of an insect species shows an explosive increase in numbers during rainy season followed by its disappearance at the end of the season. What does this show? Like this means that the suddenly the population increases a lot and then suddenly it drops. So maybe the graph looks somewhat like this. So if you look at the graph, the population suddenly increases during the rainy season and the insects disappear after the end of the season. So there is a, an abrupt drop. So what kind of graph is this? This is a J type growth curve. So if you look at the curve, it is in the shape of the English alphabet J and that is why it is called J type population growth curve. So C would be the right option. So in this type of growth curve, population density of an organ as it increases rapidly in an exponential fashion like how it is happening during the rainy season but then stops abruptly due to environmental or other factors question number 10 geometric representation of age structure is a characteristic of biotic community population landscape or ecosystem now the structure formed when age distribution is plotted for a population because a population has different age groups right so why do we need geometric representation of age structure where do we need that so only in in that uh, thing where we have different age groups so a population has different age groups now their comparative abundance gives the reproductive status of the population for example the structures which are obtained when we draw the age pyramids shows that sometimes in certain populations there are a large number of young individuals so when you have more number of young individuals somewhat like this the age pyramid pyramid looks like this this one is the pre reproductive stage this represents the reproductive stage and this represents the post reproductive stage so looking at this you can see that there are more number of younger people when compared to the older people so this type of population is showing a positive growth whereas if you look at a population like this where you have very less numbers of so where you have a population where you have very less number of younger people when compared to the older people so if you have more older people so that actually represents a negative growth whereas a population where all the age groups are kind of evenly balanced like uh, not too much of increase not too much of decrease so that shows a zero growth or a slow growth so neither a positive growth nor a negative growth but a zero growth so we talk about this geometric representation of age structure in case of a population question number 11 the formula for exponential population growth is dt by dn is equal to rn dn by rn is equal to dt d rn by dn is equal to dt dn by dt is equal to rn so we are talking about the growth of the population now let us that n if n represents the total population so we want to have a look at the growth of the population with time so growth of total population with time will be denoted by dn by dt so dn by dt represents change in population with time 
Now, if you look at the relationship of population density with time, you would see that dn by dt is equal to rn, where r represents because this change in population is directly proportional to the total population. And this r is nothing but the biotic potential of each individual of the population. So therefore, the right option is D. Question number 12. Niche overlap indicates active cooperation between two species, two different parasites on the same host, sharing of one or more resources between two species, mutualism between two species. Niche overlap. What does that mean? The term niche overlap means multiple organisms or multiple species sharing the same niche, sharing the same habitat, something like that. Now, when multiple organisms are sharing the same habitat, what will happen? They would also be sharing the resources which are present in that habitat. So niche overlap basically indicates sharing of one or more resources between two species. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.